Hi everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's uh, tutorial I'm going to show you part two of how to create special sauce or secret sauce. I use those two words um, to mean the same thing. So I'm going to show you how the last few steps of how we took a piece a boring hardware store lumber with rough edges. Uh, it's just inexpensive pine, and we turned it into this beautiful charcuterie board, okay? And um, if you're watching, um, hop on and tell me hi. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching this on replay, that would be great if you could put replay in the comments. Um, if you aren't already following or liking my DIY Dreaming page, I would love for you to do that because I have some amazing projects coming up. And I have one more that is in this same series that you're not going to want to miss. And it's going to be about how to create legs and feet for your secret sauce or special sauce pieces that you're making. So, hey, Mammy. Okay, so uh, if you remember from yesterday, we um, I showed you the first few steps of secret sauce, and I'm just gonna review that really quickly. If you wanna see specifics, just scroll back uh, one video and you'll be able to see the first two steps. Hey, Victoria. Okay, so the first thing that we did is we um, decided if we wanted to beat up our wood or not. And then we sanded the edges and the corners to make them smooth so it doesn't look quite so unfinished, all right? And I just used rough sandpaper with one of these little sanding blocks. I don't have any special equipment or tools and you don't need that, okay? So that was the first thing. And then the next thing we did is we took some gel stain and um, the products I'm gonna be talking about today, hey Jackie, are all from a company called a maker studio and I put links in the little blurb describing what today's video is about so you can go look at them because I'm going to be talking about three different colors of gel stain and I want you to be able to just easily pop over there whoops and look at them and I would love to know which one of these colors you like the best anyway so the first thing we did is we used hazel mahogany gel stain you guys, look at what a messy crafter I am. Ugh. Um, anyways, and, uh, oh no, sorry, this is not the first step. The first step was we took the cruddiest brush that we could find, and we took some biscuits and gravy. Rescue Restore paint and stuff is amazing. And we um, put some paint on our brush, and then we brushed off the majority of it, and we just did random little uh, motions to just apply some little streaks and so forth on our boards. And then um, after we did that, then we did something that I call a jab and stab where you turn your brush sideways and you just randomly pounce. And then I did put a lot more of the white, of the um, biscuits and gravy paint around the edges. Okay, so that was the first step. And when you use a dry brush um, technique, it dries pretty quickly. So the next thing we did was we applied our um, hazel mahogany gel stain with another brush, and then we just quickly wiped it off with a paper towel, okay? At, at, when I was doing this video last night, I didn't um, show you what I was gonna do to the underneath, just so you didn't have to watch. But um, basically, I just stained the underneath of it. I didn't do secret or special sauce on that, okay? And I did stain the edges, but I decided that I do like them much better when they're painted in biscuits and gravy. So after I was done uh, with that tutorial, that's what I went ahead and did. Okay, so. Those are the basics of the secret sauce or special sauce. And then I let my board dry, okay? And then I took some fine sandpaper. This is 320. I wrapped it around my little sanding disc. I mean, seriously, you guys, you do not have to have a bunch of woodworking tools to do this project. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, and find the inexpensive pine and tell them what dimensions you want to have it cut, they'll even cut it for you for free. Um, my 
both of my stores though won't allow you to cut it any smaller than 12 inches. So almost all my projects are 12 or 18 inches. Okay, and then I just took some super fine sandpaper. Once my um, board was dry, and that was this morning, and I just sanded over the whole entire thing to make it smooth, okay? And that's important when you're gonna stencil because for some reason this technique makes your wood kind of fuzzy. And when you have sort of fuzzy wood and you're trying to stencil, it frequently will bleed and it doesn't look as great. So I um, sanded really good. It didn't affect how the surface of my tray looked. This is secret sauce or special sauce. Um, and then I wiped that off and, and dried it, okay? And then I took this stencil from this pack called Farmer's Market this morning. This is what, well, this is what, it's a pack of two stencils. And this is what they look like. And I decided I wanted to put thankful, grateful, blessed in the bottom corner below where I was going to be putting the handles. So I just laid my stencil onto my piece of wood that had had the technique done. It was sanded and dry. And I used the same paint, where are my biscuits? The biscuits and gravy. And I used one of these little pouncer brushes. And I just pushed uh, a small amount of the paint through the holes on the stencil, pulled it up, threw this in my sink, wash the paint right out. I'll use the, these stencils a bazillion more times. So they're a really good investment. And this is a cute set. Um, anyways, then I let that dry, okay? And then I decided the last steps I wanted to do was to paint the edge. This is um, just like one coat of that biscuits and gravy, the same thing that we had done. And this is what the underneath looks like. So, I, um, I may give this away, and I would never give away a gift that I didn't finish both sides, sides of it. So, but I want you to notice what no, no special technique looks like versus what special technique looks like. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I love this so much better. I really do. And then I got some cute handles from Home Depot. Um, these are Allen and Roth is the brand, and they're sort of a, um, a silvery, pewtery color. Um, they were $1.48 a piece, so I only have $3 into my handles on this, what is going to be a charcuterie tray. So I just applied those, and then I put some of these little felt pads on the bottom, so that uh, when I set it on a table, there's no chance I'm going to scratch it. My last step will be to use a sealer on the top of this. And um, there's a good sealer that a maker studio has called uh, Matte Sealer, which I didn't include a link. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. But um, you can find it if you go to the website through any one of the links that I put in the little blurb. I'll just put one coat of, of the Matte Sealer on it, let it dry, and then this will be completely food safe. And I'll be able to do a wonderful charcuterie tray on this piece of wood from my hardware store. Can you believe it? That it went from this to this. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is the different colors that you can do of secret sauce. And basically what changes is the color of stain that you're gonna be using. In all of the trays that I've showed you so far, I've used hazel mahogany gel stain. This is an example where I used it pretty undiluted. Right here is an example where I diluted the gel stain and wiped it off quickly. So you can see the difference, but they're both beautiful. Could you use dishwasher? Yes, you could absolutely do that. Just make sure that your board is completely dry before you put that on. And I would probably test a little corner of it before you do the whole thing. Um, but I love Mod Podge, uh, so it's worth giving it a try. Thanks for the question, Michelle.
Hey, Debbie. Okay, so these are the differences in the hazel mahogany, which is the brown color that I love, between really diluted and not diluted very much. All right, and yesterday I showed you these stencils. These were the ones that I used on those two boards. Okay, so let me show you the other choices. All right, this little thing right here is the hazel mahogany gel stain, all right? This one right here, I did two pieces so people could see, is the Kensington Black Gel Stain. And this one right here is the Windsor Gray Gel Stain. So let me hold those all three up together so that you can see the difference. And this is where your personal preference really is gonna change which one you like the best. And also what color scheme you have in your home. I don't know, maybe I'm boring, but I, I love this um, hazel mahogany gel stain the best. But these other two are lovely as well. So I will take pictures of those and I will put pictures in the comments. This is what the Kensington uh, Black gel stain container looks like in case you're looking on the website and you want to get that. This is what the Windsor Gray container looks like. And I'm sorry, my containers always look so terrible because I am such a messy crafter. Um, but uh, anyways, I hope that you liked this project and that it inspired you. Um, all you need is some wood, some sandpaper, some brushes, a paper plate to work off of, and then um, for my maker studio, you need some biscuits and gravy paint, your choice of stain, um, and a stencil, your preference of stencil. And you could make, you could um, crank out a ton of wonderful gifts for people and different objects for your house um, that would be pretty quick, because those are the kind of crafts I like. It would be pretty simple. It doesn't require a ton of different steps or a ton of different ingredients. It would be super affordable. Your biggest investment is in your paint and gel stain, uh, but these containers are big and you could do a ton of other projects with them after the fact. And then your stencil. And your stencils are, the ones that you get from a maker studio, those you can use 25, 30, 35 times or maybe even more if you just take care of them and clean them promptly. Um, so they're quick, easy, super affordable, sometimes a little bit unusual. I mean, would you think that you could take a piece of just plywood from your hardware store and turn it into something beautiful like this? Let's take one more peek at this. This is my favorite piece of all time. And I just put these little feet on it. And then the last thing is um, all of my crafts don't require any artistic abilities or really even any crafting abilities. So I hope you like this project. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can either send me a personal message or you can put uh, your question in the comment and I will get right back to you with an answer. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Next stop is going to be feet. And I'm going to be showing you some of the different options out there for feet. Like this one has these kind of feet. This one that I showed you yesterday has these little bun feet. And then I found something really unusual at Hobby Lobby that is designed actually for curtains. But I use those to create some kind of long really cute legs for uh, to create a riser for my table. So hope that you will tune back in very soon. Most likely I'll be live again tomorrow or even possibly later today because I have so many amazing crafts lined up that I can't wait to share with you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.